a stack of papers, under the influence of human force, fell noisily onto the table, which was accompanied by a scream accusing the man of being worthless and only pretending that he was working, since the project was a complete failure. Unceremoniously pointing a finger at his subordinate, the boss added that he would not be credited with any overtime work. Sam, with his head down, listened to the words of his boss that he was just the scum of society and his worthless existence was not worth a cent. Continuing to cover his subordinate with selective curses, the boss suddenly took into his hand the glass ashtray standing on his desk. And a second later, this object, which acted as a throwing weapon, hit directly into the temporal part of the man's head. His legs gave way and a second later Sam was already lying on the floor, where, amid the boss's shouts that he didn't need to pretend, but that he needed to get up and leave his office, the blood from his broken head slowly spread across the floor. Gradually losing consciousness, the man thought that he had lived a truly worthless life, where he found it positive that this life had come to an end. To the sound of an unknown voice that the binding to the system and revival had been successfully completed, Sam began to open his eyes, where he saw a male silhouette in front of him. His first thoughts were that death had passed him by, which meant he would need to make another report, where at the same time the young man opposite was shouting for him to get away. Raising his body on one arm and feeling his head with the other, Sam said that he would follow all the instructions of his boss. However, when he looked up, the young man was very surprised to see a handful of students standing in front of him instead of the boss. Recognizing one of the nearby young men as Hank O'Brien, with whom he had once studied long ago, Sam wondered if he was still unconscious, where his presence was not in the office, but on the sports field of the educational institution, defied any other explanation. Then, relaxing, Sam fell back onto the grass, arms spread wide, and thinking it was a dream, he remembered that it was because of Hank that he had been expelled from school, where, without a certificate, he was not hired for any normal job, as a result of which he had to agree to the first place that came his way, where they were ready to take him, where he whiled away his days receiving meager wages and constantly being under the yoke of the evil boss of this third-rate company. These unpleasant memories made Sam jump to his feet, where he immediately told the one because of whom his whole life was broken that Hank was nothing of himself, but could only rely on his parents' money. But before the young man had time to finish, Hank suddenly dealt him a powerful direct kick to the body. Kneeling down, the young man, convulsively gasping for air, noted that the pain from the blow was too real for sleep. Well, Hank, who was not indifferent to his opponent's statement, came closer and asked him to repeat what he had said again. However, Sam continued to think that it was all a dream, and therefore said that he remembered everything perfectly, where the story began with their classmate, whom Hank was harassing, but Sam prevented him, putting him in an awkward position. Hearing what was said, the young man unclenched his fingers, saying that now his opponent would definitely be in trouble. Other young people standing nearby, accompanying their leader, noted that this overly arrogant guy should have broken something. Sam, smiling bewilderedly, noted to himself that this was just a dream, and therefore nothing would happen to him. At this time, one of Hank's escorts asked him for permission to be the first to punish the impudent man, to which he agreed. Sam tried to remember what he had read that brought his subconscious to memories of his school years and, accordingly, to such a dream. But suddenly the guy who appeared in front of him, calling on some forces, tore his clothes with just the tension of the muscles of his body, after which Sam saw how the leg of this thug flew into the air and now quickly landed right on his head. The instinct of self-preservation did not fail him, where the young man was able to avoid the blow, literally jumping on the spot, and his unexpected opponent, noticing in which direction the young man should land, immediately continued the attack, raising his hand. Sam saw the thug's hand approaching him, and a voice suddenly announced the discovery of a deadly threat and the activation of protection. But realizing that he had no time left to dodge the blow, the young man closed his eyes, preparing to take this blow. But suddenly his opponent's hand seemed to simply rest against his body without causing any time, which caused corresponding reactions from both the one who struck and Sam, after which the young man, who believed in himself, showed his opponent an obscene gesture, saying that he had not eaten much porridge and he should have trained a little more before getting into a fight. Then the enraged fighter attacked his opponent, striking him multiple blows to various parts of the body. But the result of none of his attacks changed, and Sam responded by saying that now it was his turn to try. 
where with just one movement of his leg he struck the most vulnerable male spot, where a sharp and severe pain froze everything in his opponent, even the ability to make sounds. And the winner of this short fight, smiling joyfully, asked the rest who wanted to be next. Hank, calling the loser not the most flattering word, instructed his two henchmen to deal with the arrogant boy. Where are these two, having become like their predecessor, also calling on certain forces, tearing their clothes? And they were accompanied by someone who had already tasted the power of Sam's blow. Looking at his opponents, the young man shouted that they were just dirty little people who were capable of nothing but intimidating and beating the weak. But before the system had time to announce a threat, protection from which was only 50% possible, the young man received a huge blow to the body, where he immediately felt how several of his ribs literally cracked from this blow. He himself was thrown back several meters by this shock wave. This was not a simple blow used by one of his new opponents, where in order to deliver it it was necessary to develop and master the chi energy. Lying on the grass and exhausted from pain, Sam wondered why the attacks of the first enemy were harmless to him, and the last attack was almost fatal. And the system immediately explained that 100% protection will only be provided if the enemy's level of development is the same as that of the owner of the system. Whereupon hearing this, Sam was very upset, noting that even in a dream everything does not happen the way he wanted would. But then the system said that the owner was not in a dream, since his past body had long since died as a result of the injury he received. Where now the young man is back in his own body as it was during his school years, and at the corresponding time in his life. And while Sam was conducting these unheard negotiations, his opponents were coming closer, and suddenly a hail of blows rained down on the young man, where the system only had time to note how much damage was blocked, by 100 or 50 percent. With each blow he received, the young man felt that his strength was leaving him, and his consciousness was becoming less and less clear. Blood flowed down his broken head and into his eyes, and the system continued to report the degree of damage blocking. And finally, from his injuries and loss of blood, the young man lost consciousness and passed out. Sam's eyes began to slowly open, where he heard the dull voice of the system, which reported the restoration of his internal organs, brain, bones. And finally, feeling the strength in himself, the young man jumped up on the bed, thinking that this dream was somehow very long. Looking around, the young man noted that he was in a hospital ward. Then the young man paid attention to the state of his body, examining his arms, legs, body and feeling his head. Instantly, his memory flashed back to recent events in which a crowd of his classmates simply kicked him around on the football field. What created in him the understanding that these events could not end without consequences for his health. Jumping out of bed, Sam went to the mirror, where, looking at himself, he noted that he was not only alive, but also did not have a single scratch. To which the system immediately explained that at the moment the host's body has been completely restored, and if it is suddenly in mortal danger, the self-healing function will be triggered. After listening to the explanations, the young man noted that this was quite a useful function. Having turned to the system, the young man asked to provide him with more detailed information regarding his new capabilities and conditions of cooperation with the system, to which the system explained that he only wanted to present the control panel, which Sam immediately did, where, after some time, which was spent on applying willpower, a certain screen began to appear in the air, and now the young man was already looking at the screen, which reflected all the significant information about the damage points received, the skills and level of the owner. Trying to understand the structure of the system, the young man noted that the protection is always active and accumulates damage points, where at the moment he has 27 such points, which means that he received exactly that many hits yesterday. Remembering what had already been announced by the system, the young man noted that if the enemy is equal, then he absorbs 100% of the damage, and if he is stronger, then the absorption drops to 50%. Therefore, if he fights with an equal opponent, then each blow adds only one point of damage to him, where all the damage received is absorbed, which means he will not feel pain. If the enemy is stronger, then each blow will bring five times more points, but the pain from the blow will also be felt. The system also provided a store in which accumulated damage points could be exchanged for useful skills and items. Thus, it turns out that in order to level up himself, he needs to be constantly beaten, which did not make Sam very happy, since the revival promised him the opportunity to take revenge, and not be beaten again. 
But then the system announced that tasks would appear daily to develop the owner's skills, and then one of them was voiced, according to which the owner must spend at least three hours a day training endurance, flexibility, strength, and hone his technique, to which Sam, pointing to his leg, replied that you can't do much training in a cast. But at that moment, a noise was heard behind the door, and the handle fell down under the influence of someone's force. However, the young man's quickness was enough to instantly find himself back in bed, and the nurses who came in were discussing why Sam still hadn't woken up, where his regeneration abilities amazed everyone, since it usually takes ten months to recover from his injuries, while everything healed for him in six hours. But then the young man made it clear that he was no longer passed out, and the girls, delighted that the patient had regained consciousness, immediately began asking about his well-being. Looking at his first visitors, Sam asked how he ended up here in the first place, to which one of the sisters explained that Sam's classmate Cardin Jones had taken him to the hospital. Remembering the first beauty of the school, the young man also remembered how in his past life Hank constantly tried to harass the girl. But Sam did not allow this, which ultimately ended badly for him. So in this life, he, apparently, stood up for her, but he could not even imagine that she would treat him with such attention. Noticing that the young man had fallen into some kind of prostration, the nurses asked if everything was okay with him, to which Sam replied that his whole body ached, he felt dizzy and periodically felt very nauseous, to which one of the girls explained that these are the consequences of a concussion, where the young man simply needs more rest. Having told him to remain on bed rest and to call them if anything happened, the nurses left the room. Left alone, Sam was very surprised that the girls did not see a transparent screen with a timer hanging in the air. But deciding that it wasn't worth thinking about it too much, Sam collapsed in his hospital bed, deciding that it was really better for him to rest, since adapting to this new world would also require strength. Suddenly he noticed his backpack, noting the merits of Cardin, who brought here not only himself, but also did not forget about his things. Sticking his hand inside, the young man found it wise to first familiarize himself with the history of this world. Having opened the textbook, the young man saw that in addition to ordinary historical events, it also described the history of the development of human energy, where it was said that the first people who learned to use energy appeared about 300 years ago. By practicing energy management, a person developed to the point that he could begin to manage his physical capabilities. Over time, the art of energy management developed into a specific system of three steps, each of which consisted of three more substeps. There were three main ways to develop internal energy, with physical exercise in first place. Second place was occupied by various artifacts, by absorbing which it was possible to increase the amount of energy. And finally, in third place were parallel and other worlds, the entrances to which were scattered throughout the world, where it was possible to increase energy by gaining experience. According to rumors, followers of the third direction have the highest strength and power, occupying key positions in this world, including in business and in government. Exhaling, Sam noted that he, apparently, had not reached even the lowest bar here, which is why he was bullied and beaten in this world. The long reading was tiring, and gradually the young man felt his eyelids getting heavier and heavier, and soon he fell into a sound and healthy sleep, completely forgetting about one task that he had to complete. The young man woke up from the fact that the voice of the system reported that he had not completed his task for a three-hour training session. Thinking that he had completely forgotten about it, the young man began to quickly get out of bed. But before he even had time to sit down completely, a portal opened right below him, which led him to even greater horror, after which the support under him disappeared, and Sam began to fall into the black depths of the open passage into another dimension. Feeling his complete helplessness, the young man could only scream. But then his flight suddenly ended, where the young man landed not very successfully on the floor of some room. Noting that it was quite painful to land, Sam looked around, trying to understand where the system had thrown him. But his thoughts were interrupted by a rustling sound that grew stronger as he approached. Turning around, the young man saw a huge monster with long tentacles right in front of him. He looked in horror as one of these tentacles, which, moreover, were also covered with spikes soared into the air. And finally, his nerves could not stand it, and Sam shouted a question to the invisible interlocutor, asking which he wanted to understand what was going on here. Meanwhile, the hellish limb began its rapid movement towards the target, 
where the young man found nothing better than to try to block this blow, which turned out to be not a weak one, where additional harm, of course, was caused by the thorns. Thrown far to the side, Sam again hit painfully on the surface of the floor of the room in which he found himself to be punished for failing to complete the assigned task. Sitting down and wincing in pain, the young man asked the system why he, having already been beaten in real life, should receive beatings here too. To which the system immediately explained that this is a punishment where he must evade the attacks of the tentacles fifty times in an unlimited time, where until the task is completed he will never return to the ordinary world. Looking at the monster and its terrible limbs, the task of dodging fifty times seemed like something out of science fiction to the young man, and one of the ominous limbs was again preparing to deliver its terrible and possibly fatal blow. Rising to his feet, Sam instructed himself not to panic, because he had already died once, which means he could definitely evade some tentacles. Having waited for the right moment, the young man loudly gave himself the order to move, and he managed to leave the line of attack of the monster's spiked limb literally just before the moment of striking. Pleased with himself, the young man noted that speed does not matter. The main thing for him is to see and anticipate the movement of his opponent. Busy with his conclusions, Sam did not notice how, on the other hand, the other limb of the monster was already almost close to his head, where, a moment later, his head took a crushing blow, once again throwing the young man several meters back, where he again hit the floor painfully. Rising to his feet and rubbing the side of the blow, Sam swore loudly, also noting that he was not prepared for this blow. But before the young man even had time to figure something out, one after another numerous blows rained down on him on different parts of his body, and then, with one of the blows, he was thrown several meters back once again, where, overcoming the pain while sitting on the floor, the young man could no longer figure out how to resist this monster. And just as he decided to gather his thoughts and rose to his feet, suddenly one of the tentacles quickly plunged into his leg. And when the monster pulled back its limb, Sam, experiencing terrible pain, fell to the floor. Immediately, blood began to ooze from his wounds, and the young man himself no longer had the strength to rise to his feet. At that same moment, the system announced that the owner was in critical condition and began the recovery process, where Sam's entire body was suddenly covered with some kind of thick white fog, which had a healing effect. Since healing occurred much faster in the punishment arena than in the real world, the system announced that in a few seconds the owner would be back in action. And now the owner of the system was already on his feet again, preparing to evade the next attack of the monster. Dodging the tentacle, Sam noted that his suffering had not been in vain. After all, now he has become accustomed to the speed of the enemy, and has studied the manner of his movements, which allows him to dodge perfectly. But suddenly the young man felt some kind of pulsating flow circulating throughout his body. He felt that this inner warmth allowed him to better control his body, concentrate, and keep his mind cool. Dodging another attack, Sam smugly said that he was nearby, and the monster could safely attack him after which the young man confidently declared that today he would definitely defeat his opponent and get out of the arena of punishment. For several seconds his opponent showed no signs of life at all, but suddenly all his limbs began to move at once. Sam could only watch in horror as all the tentacles his opponent possessed approached him at once, where, a second later, a hail of strong blows fell on his body, trying to shield himself from which, the young man only repeated that now he would definitely die. When the attack was over and the tentacles retreated, Sam's wounded body was left lying on the floor without signs of life. And the system, having become more active, announced the beginning of the recovery process, during which the young man noted that despite the rapid healing of the wounds, the pain from them still remained. And so, under the system's report that the progress of the task was zero, Sam rose to his feet noting that the flow of energy continued to circulate in him. Looking at his opponent, the young man noted that since he has the ability to recover, this means he has a chance to get out of here sooner or later. Therefore, smiling at the monster, Sam said that he was ready to fight him again. And so the monster began to attack, where the young man dodged one, two, three blows, to the sound of a system keeping score. But suddenly one of the tentacles was able to touch his shoulder, where the system immediately announced that the dodge was unsuccessful and the counter was reset to zero. And while his body was being restored to its original state, the stubborn young man shouted that he wanted it again. And now he again decisively opposed his invincible and unprecedented opponent, 
and three hours later, when the system counter had already counted 23 slopes, one of the tentacles was able to strike, resetting the results. After six hours of fights, the young man masterfully dodged numerous attacks from the monster's limbs, and the system only managed to keep score. Turning his head to the left, Sam failed the monster's attack, and the system counted 49 dodges. And then, noticing the movement of another tentacle, the young man leaned back and to the side a little, after which it was announced that the number of evasions from attacks was 50, where at the same moment the monster was deactivated, and the system announced that the owner had completed the task and his safe return to the ordinary world. Exhausted from fatigue, Sam happily noted that he was still able to cope with this task. And now the young man was already in his room, where he again took up his studies. The nurse who came in said that it would be better for him not to study, but to rest, to which Sam replied that he had an exam soon, and therefore he needed to prepare. Then the girl said that the young man would most likely miss the exam, which prompted the latter to ask for what reason, to which the nurse explained that today Hank had already come to the hospital, wanting to get to Sam, but he was not allowed in. Then he said that he would beat him after discharge, after which the girl added that Hank connected his connections, and the young man was suspended from the exam. Of course, this was shocking news, which Sam was very dissatisfied with, which he shouted loudly. The girl added that for these reasons it is better for the young man to stay in the hospital in order to protect his life and health. Already leaving the ward, she noted that in the modern world it is very difficult to remain just a good person. Left alone, the young man began to think that his old acquaintance Hank turned out to be much meaner than he could have imagined, which, however, did not give a reason to be upset, but only stimulated the young man to become even stronger. And while the system announced that the owner was again tasked with exercising physically for three hours, Sam decided that exercise in the punishment arena would be much more useful. And so, instead of engaging in physical training, the young man calmly waited until the time allotted for sports was up. And finally, the deadline expired, and the system announced that the owner would now be redirected to the punishment arena. This time, a portal opened above the head of the one who had transgressed the system, pulling him inside. And once in the arena, Sam saw that this time it was not just one monster that was opposing him, but a whole bunch of some creatures. Once again, the goal was to evade enemy attacks 50 times in a row, where the young man joyfully exclaimed that he was ready to begin after which all the monsters opposite him activated and rushed at their victim. The battle was repeated many times, where with each subsequent approach Sam dodged better and better. And finally, the system announced that the next task was successfully completed by the owner, and the young man began to feel more and more the energy flowing through his body, which was clearly becoming more abundant. And then the system issued a notification that as a reward for completing tasks, the amount of chi and experience was increased where Sam himself noted that even this was still not enough to defeat Hank. But in any case, the task was completed, and it was necessary to first leave the arena of punishment, where in the ward it was already possible to think about what to do next. But suddenly the room seemed to begin to collapse, which the young man clearly did not expect and even screamed in surprise. A second later, the system issued a notification about the opportunity to complete a bonus task, meeting one of the stronger monsters where the prize was an increase in chi, to which, of course, Sam immediately agreed. And as soon as the system menu disappeared, stones began to fall from the ceiling again, and the young man did not know what kind of trick to expect and where to expect it from. But his attention was attracted by the whistling sound of cutting air, and only turning his head, the young man saw something huge rushing straight towards him. A terrible blow from a huge hammer knocked Sam off his feet, throwing him to the side several meters where, getting up and wiping his face, the young man looked at his new opponent, noting that he had never seen anything like this in his life. After all, right in front of him stood some unknown creature on four limbs and with a huge hammer at the end of its tail. While the young man was thinking that this task would definitely not be easy, the system announced that Sam needed to hold out against the monster for 30 minutes. And now, already dodging another attack, the young man noted that, taking into account the possibility of recovery, holding out for 30 minutes would not be a big problem. But suddenly it dawned on him that this monster was not going to wait for the moment until his opponent recovered, since the monster continued its attacks despite the injuries and recovery mode. The huge hammer, the impact of which Sam had already experienced, was again raised above his head to strike, 
Trying to avoid the deadly blow, the young man jumped to the side relative to the trajectory of the monster's tail, where, having fallen to the floor, the young man noted that, apparently, this monster was definitely aimed at killing him, and then the system also made it known that the owner had already received many injuries, where the recovery time had increased, and the efficiency of his movements was reduced by 10%, which certainly did not add joy. The opponent of the guilty user of the system, who was chasing bonuses, was already preparing a new attack, raising his hammer to the maximum height. The blow was of monstrous force, from which Sam tried to shield himself with his hands, while moving to the side. Although the force did not hit the young man directly, his arms were nevertheless broken in several places. The pain was hellish, and in the meantime the system stated that the owner had critical injuries, inviting him to leave the arena. Sam was ready to agree with this proposal, but at the last moment, he suddenly froze. He suddenly remembered how an ashtray flew into his head, taking his life. He remembered that humiliating blow on the football field, where he later ended up in a hospital bed. And then he decided to stay in the arena, where at that very moment the monster dealt him a severe blow. Having flown far back, the young man found himself on the edge of the arena, hitting the wall of the room. Unable to move his broken arms, Sam looked at the monster, trying to think of a way to hold out until the end. And now he noted that this arena of punishment may well become his last refuge, where no one will ever find him. But then, looking at his approaching opponent, Sam noted that the monster was not only strong, but also incredibly fast. However, he also had a weak side, where, if you analyze all his attacks, he was clearly not smart enough. And this gave a good advantage, since when dealing with a not particularly smart opponent, you can always predict all his movements. And while the young man was developing a plan of action, the monster was already nearby and looking towards where his opponent was in no hurry to descend. Without waiting for Sam to be below, the monster delivered another blow with its terrible tail, which, however, the young man dodged by jumping down. There he noted that there is enough space in the arena to dodge blows, where the main thing is not to let yourself be driven into a corner. But then, with another blow, the young man was again thrown to the edge of the arena after which he began to gradually take more and more active actions in order to dodge the hammer, and the system only managed to count down the minutes. But then, the rapid movement of the tail still caught up with the almost exhausted young man. Once again thrown to the edge of the arena, Sam sat there in pain and came to the conclusion that he was about to lose consciousness, and the monster had already come very close, swinging in order to finish off its victim once and for all. The monster had never dealt a worse blow during the entire confrontation, and Sam could only think about how to somehow hold out. And suddenly a smile flashed across his face, because the system announced that the owner had successfully passed the test. And so, after some moments, the young man was already lying in his hospital bed, rejoicing that he was able to withstand everything that happened to him, and the system announced a reward, as well as a recovery that would take eight hours. Continuing to study new literature for himself, Sam was suddenly delighted with the information he came across, where it was said that a training person is able to transform his chi and use its power in fights. Only now did he understand what kind of warmth was in his body, where he immediately tried to transform the energy into something material. And while he was trying out his new capabilities, the system issued a task according to which he must score 100 points of damage during the exam, which led the young man to the idea that it was time to act. Many young people were rushing to see what had just been posted on the student forum, while discussing whether this man man was still alive. Meanwhile, a huge crowd had already gathered in front of the school, standing and listening to what the man on the stage was telling them. This man was Sam, who, shouting his name into a bullhorn, called for Hank O'Brien to come to him right now. Without stopping for a second, the young man continued to call his old enemy, saying that he was already tired of waiting for him here and the students standing nearby at first could not understand at all that this was happening before their eyes. But after a few seconds, the crowd was filled with discussions of what was happening, with some saying that Sam was provoking Hank, others simply calling him psychotic. But they all agreed that after his careless statements, Sam would definitely not live long. And someone even decided to try to be the first to find Hank and report the impudent man, thereby earning his respect. Listening to what was coming from the crowd, Sam noted that this was not enough and the situation needed to be escalated even more. And then he moved on to specific insults, saying that Hank was hiding like a rat in a basement. 
and that he flattered himself by trying to attract the attention of such a beauty as Catherine, where with his disgusting face Hank has no chance not only of this girl, but of any other. After which the young man, smiling, noted that today he was not only declaring war on his old enemy, but also wanted to make another announcement, where from today Catherine becomes his girlfriend and is under his protection. And if a dog like Hank suddenly dares to even look askance in her direction, then he will first break his limbs, then gouge out his eyes and finally deprive him of the ability to procreate. Having heard such loud statements, the crowd began to say that now this would definitely not end easily for Sam, since Hank had his eye on Catherine for a long time. Where some people didn't believe that this guy on stage just decided to go against Hank himself and others were already discussing how next year the school would announce a memorial day dedicated to the late Sam Stone. And standing nearby Cardin, one of her friends hinted that Sam, in fact, had just confessed his love to her. The girl, lowering her head, sadly mentally noted that the young man was acting recklessly, since Hank would simply destroy him. But immediately looking towards the scene where Sam continued to cover up his enemy with a variety of words, Catherine noted that this guy had saved her many times which means now it was her turn to help him. And while the young man continued to perform, a figure suddenly appeared in one of the windows of the school building, where, as it turned out, Hank himself came to the window and visited the school principal's office. Looking down, he immediately noticed his longtime enemy Sam Stone, wondering what he was doing here on the day students registered for the exam. Turning to the director nearby, Hank asked why this guy was suddenly allowed to take the exams. To which the director replied that sometimes people, of course, behave ignorantly, but he is sure that Sam will eventually quit his studies, and the young man shouted that he couldn't imagine how he could force his enemy to expel without killing him. The director said that it took a lot of effort to first expel that young man, and then even more to reinstate him to pass the exam. However, the impudent young man asked in an arrogant voice whether the director really refused to carry out his will to which the man timidly replied that he was in no way going to contradict Mr. O'Brien and would try to sort out this problem. Already left alone in the office, the director sighed with relief and noted that today his career could have come to an end. And then the day of the exam came, where the director explained that there were many portals to other worlds scattered throughout their world, but today an artificially created dimension was used for the exam. The portal that the students are now seeing will take them to the examination dimension where they will need to pass tests to pass the exam. And before going to the exam, each student will receive two special and very important items a sign and a signal flare. There are three tests in total, the first of which is competition for tablets, the second is a battle with monsters, and the third is finding a way out. In the first test, students compete for tablets with each other, where the more tablets collected, the more points each exam participant will receive. The same applies to confronting monsters, where the more of them the student defeats, the more points he receives. After passing the first two stages, all that remains is to find a way out of the examination dimension. The man also noted that there is no need to pretend to be heroes, and if a real threat arises, they should use a signal flare so that one of the mentors can save them. After the end of the briefing, active negotiations and discussions began among the exam participants, where some students tried to form teams to make it easier to pass the exam where they immediately thought through the tactics of their joint actions to take possession of the maximum number of signs. Hank was also here, not without joy, noting that due to his recent behavior, which had greatly hurt the young man, no one would join him on the team. He shouted to the lonely Sam that he would be left alone and would have only a short time to live. He explained what was happening by saying that the entire academy was under the authority of him and his family. Sam, not paying attention to the shouts of his enemy, thought that even the instructors are not able to control what is happening in another dimension. That's why they issue a signal flare. Therefore, this is an ideal place for Hank to take some unfriendly actions. And then, looking at the merry company of his enemy, Sam noted to himself that soon everyone would look at who would laugh last. His thoughts were interrupted by a familiar female voice calling the young man by name. Turning around, Sam saw Catherine approaching him, who offered to become the same team with him in this exam. In response, the young man asked if she was afraid of Hank's reaction by making such an offer, to which Catherine replied that she was at least indebted to her savior, after which she cheerfully added that even though she is a girl, she nevertheless has more than enough strength. Sam, feeling emotional, noted to himself that this girl really worries about him, 
and does not even hide her motives for helping. And so, having accepted Catherine's offer, the young man, heading with her to the portal, said that together it would really be easier. Suddenly, one of Hank's henchmen, pointing to the young people walking together, drew his leader's attention to the fact that Catherine, apparently, had joined Sam's team. Of course, this news didn't really please Hank, who had been trying to get this girl's attention for a long time. But then the director said that the exam was starting and invited everyone to proceed to the portal, where Hank and his entire huge gang were the first to resolutely go there. Having heard the invitation to the exam, Sam also told his companion that it was time for them to move forward, to which the girl, of course, agreed. And so the young people approached the portal and took a step that was supposed to lead them to the examination dimension. And so, after a short moment, instead of the walls of the room where they had just been, a forest appeared before their eyes, where a young man, having caught a falling leaf, noted that although this dimension was created artificially, the leaf could not be distinguished from the real one. His thoughts were interrupted by the sudden appearance of Hank and his team, who noted that the time to admire nature had come to an end, after which he added that now Sam should think about what kind of death he would prefer to choose for himself. Standing nearby, Catherine noted that her plan to simply wander around the dimension in the company of Sam had clearly failed with Hank's quick appearance, and her companion suddenly cheerfully said that the girl had nothing to worry about and she could fully rely on him after which Sam went to the approaching young people, giving Catherine instructions to stay away and under no circumstances interfere. Not at all understanding what her companion was up to, the girl could only say his name, and Sam had already managed to approach Hank and his henchmen, where his enemy displeasedly noted that he was flirting with his future girlfriend. Demonstrating a kick, Sam suddenly said that his opponents still don't even know how strong he is where all the young people standing opposite were struck by how confident this guy was in himself. Meanwhile, Sam, shouting that the only one who will die today is Hank himself, rushed towards him, preparing to strike. However, the young people standing nearby suddenly began to discuss the fact that they seemed to hear the crunching of bones, suggesting that Sam's injuries had not yet healed. The attacker himself, suddenly feeling a sharp loss of strength, was forced to stop his movement, feeling how his body was beginning to let him down, but still trying to speak loudly to his opponent. The young man noted that his chi energy suddenly began to affect the speed of his movements, preventing him from completing the attack, and the entire crowd of his opponents just stood there, silently watching what was happening to Sam. But then all the young people burst into laughter, where Hank egg on his opponent, saying that of course it was about energy, and not about the fear of being maimed. Then, Looking at the bent young man, Hank said that no amount of performance would save him from what he would have a good bite of today, and so the leader of the group ordered one of his subordinates to teach Sam a lesson in strength, where the order was carried out immediately, and the young man approached the target, collecting chi energy for the attack. Sam didn't even try to defend himself from the blow, which practically knocked him off the spot where he stood, and the system announced that the resistance to this attack was 100%. One point of damage was awarded, where, according to the instructions, he should receive 100 points. Looking at his opponent, Sam said that he, apparently, had little practice, since his blow was not even felt. And then, showing on his face where to hit, the young man began to ask to try again. After which everyone else who accompanied Hank also became active, I wished to teach this impudent boy a lesson. Saying that Sam would definitely not live now, the young people began to surround him which, however, did not frighten the young man at all. And then the first blow was delivered, where the attacker put his full effort into this blow. And the system immediately announced to Sam that the attack was blocked 100%, and he had already earned two points out of the required 100. Straightening up and smiling in response, the young man noted that his new opponent's blow was even worse than the previous one. But before he could finish speaking, he immediately received a powerful blow to the body with the edge of his foot, where the system invariably announced a 100% block and an increase of one point of damage, after which Sam, continuing to egg on his opponents, noted that they definitely need to learn to hit harder. Having apparently decided to test his entire arsenal of striking techniques on his opponent, the next opponent delivered an elbow strike directly to the young man's head, where again all possible damage was blocked, despite the young man staggering from the force of the blow. Turning to look at the one who was throwing the punch, Sam noted that he had the impression that he had come to a massage parlor, 
and was not participating in a fight, which, apparently, was the last straw of patience, since there were no more single attacks, and all the guys nearby began to randomly beat Sam. And in the midst of the action, Catherine, approaching the place where her companion was being beaten, threateningly demanded that Hank stop all this. But instead, her companion himself answered the girl, again asking her not to interfere and just observe. And while Catherine was perplexed, Sam mentally noted that there was only a little time left to wait until the task was completed. Hank, meanwhile, seeing how the girl tried to stand up for his enemy, shouted loudly for his team not to stop. And the same young man received a very strong blow, which literally knocked him off his feet. After which all the other participants in the brawl quickly rushed to finish off the enemy who had fallen to the ground. The blows rained down on Sam like a hail, and all he had time to do was note how hard it was for his opponents. Meanwhile, each blow was accompanied not only by the young man's request to hit harder, but also by the voice of the system, stating the increase in points. Katrin watched everything that happened in amazement, who noted that despite such a brutal beating, her companion looked as if nothing was happening to him at all. The leader of the group, who also did not interfere in the brawl, took out his cell phone and decided that this spectacle should be seen by as many people as possible. And so the rest of the students who were in the examination dimension began to receive messages with coordinates and an invitation to see the most interesting show. Lively discussing what could be happening there and fired up with interest, the exam participants began to move along the indicated coordinates. Someone, on the contrary, doubted that it was worth going there, since it could turn out to be a trap in order to get their signs. But explaining that Hank, who sent the message, is already capable of leaving everyone without signs, other students carried away the doubters. And so, soon a whole crowd of spectators had already gathered at the scene of the events, who were very surprised by what they saw. Surrounded by Hank's exhausted people, Sam lounged imposingly on the ground, telling his opponents that he hadn't even had time to feel anything yet. Then, sitting down and looking straight into the face of one of those who were diligently beating him, the young man asked why they had called so many spectators, perhaps to show everyone their shame. And then all the spectators began to mock the fact that Hank called them to watch how his henchman, exhausted, stood next to Sam. Of course, Hank himself was not at all happy with this state of affairs, where he did not understand what happened to his team. Without missing a beat, he gave the order to continue beating their common enemy, to which the completely exhausted fighters began to say that they no longer had any strength left, and it was useless to hit Sam, since he did not feel their blows at all. Sam himself stood and lamented that these worthless guys could not even complete the job, where he still had not scored the required number of damaged points. Patting one of them on the face, he noted that the young people had only made themselves a laughing stock along with their leader. After which Sam turned directly to Hank, where he noted that since his guys turned out to be worthless, then perhaps he should have tried to attack himself. Having listened to what his enemy had just said, Hank, filled with hatred, stood aside for now, and then the entire crowd nearby burst into laughter, discussing the fact that Sam and Hank's team could not even deal with such a non-entity as Sam. Catherine did not stand aside either, who was greatly amused by how her offender, having tried to disgrace Sam, ended up disgracing himself. But suddenly Sam's longtime enemy began to move forward, where it immediately became visible how he began to collect chi energy to strike. The blow that Hank was about to deliver was one of the strongest, where Catherine shouted at Sam to retreat without facing this deadly technique. And then the attacker's hand finally reached the target, which was accompanied by a powerful sound effect. However, the result of this attack literally shocked the young man where his opponent easily stopped this crushing blow. Grabbing Hank's hand, Sam sarcastically asked if this was all his opponent was capable of, and at that time the system announced the addition of one point. The spectators, who continued to watch what was happening, began to laugh again, now noting the pathetic abilities of Hank, who could not even move such a weakling as Sam, where a young man, without hiding his anger, listened to the fact that he only knows how to hide behind the status of his family but he himself turned out to be incapable of anything. And when a stream of rage overwhelmed the young man, he, shouting several obscene words at his opponent, rushed into a new attack. Gathering chi energy into his fist, Hank directed its movement straight at his enemy. However, it was not difficult for Sam to slightly dodge this attack, which only touched him briefly so that the system would add a point to him. Continuing to provoke his opponent to further actions, 
the young man, smiling, asked if there would be any significant actions on the part of his opponent. Hank, thinking only that all this was simply impossible, launched a new attack. As a result, Sam's lower jaw took on a huge uppercut, which literally tore the young man off the surface of the earth while the system continued to announce the addition of points. However, having calmly landed back and without even falling, Sam, shaking himself off, again reproached his opponent for the insignificance of his skills. Katrin, who continued to watch what was happening with interest, noted that she had clearly underestimated her companion. Hank was simply lamenting out loud that his attacks, for reasons completely incomprehensible to him, had no effect. Looking at the confused old enemy, Sam said that his skills were slightly better than those of his henchmen and suggested that they continue trying. The young man's thoughts were only that he needed to accumulate a sufficient number of points in order to later get even with his offender. And at this time, saying that Sam forced him, Hank took some capsule from his pocket, which he did not hesitate to swallow. The spectators, watching this action, noted that the young man used a special pill, which exposes the body to such changes that affect a significant increase in strength and ability to transform chi energy, where excessively frequent use of such drugs has a detrimental effect on the human body over time. Meanwhile, Hank simply began to burst from the sharply increased level of chi energy where he hissed at the enemy that he had achieved this himself. At the same moment, the system announced to the owner that due to changes in the enemy, the complexity of the task also changes, where it moves to a different category, and the required number of points increases to 150. Of course, Sam was not very happy that the difficulty of the task had increased, since before the changes he only had 20 points left to score. Concerned, Catherine shouted to her companion to be careful as Hank was now stronger than ever. Well, Hank himself, feeling that the drug he had taken had begun to take full effect, was already rushing towards his opponent. But blocking the blow, Sam noted that the power of his opponent's attacks had increased significantly. What he felt and his back hit the tree, to which he was thrown by Hank's blow. This attack was not in vain for the young man's hands, which were severely burned in the places where force and energy were applied. The system announced that the impact resistance was 50%, and 6 points of damage were awarded. Yes, although the points did not reset to zero during the new task, holding out until reaching 150 was not at all an easy task, and the enraged enemy was already beginning his new attack, where, judging by the movements, one could understand that the next blow would be delivered with a kick. Sam, having time to notice all the movements of his opponent, also saw how his leg was raised where the young man managed to dodge to avoid severe damage, and the leg, carrying enormous force, applied it to the trunk of a nearby tree, breaking it in half. Telling Sam, who was on the ground, that he had nowhere to hide, Hank raised his leg high to deliver a downward slash, where the defender had no choice but to block this blow, after which the system again announced a 50% block and an increase of 9 damage points. Hank, feeling that after taking the pill something had changed in his favor, did not think of stopping, where he launched an attack consisting of a series of punches, which, however, Sam dodged. Noting that his opponent did not have enough spirit and strength to even answer him, Hank said that then he would continue the fight in the same manner, reminding Sam of all those loud words that he said on stage in front of the educational institution. The embittered fighter struck again with his hand, after which, looking at the huge hole that was left after his blow in the tree trunk, the attacker invited his opponent to surrender, where surrender means that his opponent is no longer worth resisting, which Sam did not agree to. Not at all listening to what his old enemy was saying, the young man noted that due to the fact that he had to dodge these two powerful attacks, points were not added, but it was better than getting hit with a single blow that would incapacitate him and prevent him from completing the task. And then, while he was thinking, Hank launched a new attack, where he struck Sam with his knee while jumping and the system immediately announced the degree of blocking and the addition of damage points. Thrown against the tree again, the young man thought that he wouldn't last long like this, and the effect of the drug was unknown when it would end, so something had to be thought of. Looking at his opponent, who was holding on to the place where the knee had just landed, Hank once again rushed to attack, where in Sam's eyes there was suddenly a comparison between the guy rushing towards him and the monster he had to stand against for thirty minutes. Then the young man decided that here it was necessary to choose approximately the same tactics of action as then in the arena of punishment. 
As Sam watched his opponent prepare to attack, he told himself to focus and calm his mind. He saw Hank rushing towards him, imagining that same monster with a huge hammer at the end of his tail. Even though his opponent's speed was very high, his experienced eye still managed to catch every movement. And so the blow was delivered, where the young man made a slight movement of his body in order to dodge it. However, the slope was calculated in such a way that Sam's face caught a little without causing significant damage, where the system immediately announced an increase in points. And the spectators around began to actively and dissatisfiedly discuss the fact that Hank was clearly aiming at the temple and wanted to kill Sam. While defending himself from another attack, the young man overheard these conversations and mentally noted that it would not be so easy to kill him now. Hank's next attack threw the young man a couple of meters, wounding his hands, from which blood immediately sprayed. However, this could not make him retreat, and he continued to hold a fighting stance under the voice of the scoring system. In the new movement of his opponent, he noticed a familiar angle, where the first monster he fought with was also pointing its tentacles, after which the young man noted that this boy could never compare with that monster from the arena of punishment. Since during the time spent in that arena, he learned to evade any, even the most complex attacks very well. And furious that he could not completely defeat his opponent, Hank gathered his energy and struck again, from which Sam did not dodge, but accepted it by putting out a block with his hands. The next blow followed immediately, then another, and the system only had time to announce the addition of points. Amazed spectators enthusiastically noted that Sam, by some miracle, survived all of Hank's attacks, even the most powerful ones. Everyone noted that the guy had many wounds on his body, which, however, did not seem too terrible. She was worried about the condition of her friend and Catherine, who did not understand why he did not hit back. It was assumed that after the attack, which was carried out under the influence of the pill, Sam's hands were damaged quite badly, where it was after this that the young man began to try to adapt to the way his opponent acted, where he dodged or failed blows in order to avoid serious harm or minimize it. The only thing that didn't fit into the girl's head was that all this could have been done by a person with extensive experience in martial arts. But Sam was never one of those people. Meanwhile, the restless Hank was again preparing his attack, using his chi energy to the fullest. Watching the trajectory of his opponent's hand, Sam tried to figure out how best to negate the power of the blow. And so, realizing what needed to be done, the young man quickly and forcefully pushed off from the ground, where, just a moment later, his opponent's hand caught up with him along the same trajectory. The force, of course, was enough to throw the young man several meters back into another tree. But we managed to avoid receiving significant damage. Moreover, we managed to get damage points. Where, after the next points were awarded, the system announced that the task was completed, and the owner could now receive a reward. There were three reward options to choose from, where the first item was an increase in speed, the second item was an increase in speed, and the third was the ability to attack in response. Watching Hank prepare to attack him again, Sam chose the third option without any doubt, deciding that he would not allow himself to be beaten just like that anymore. And now the enemy approached him, delivering his next terrible blow. However, to the great surprise of the attacker himself, Sam easily stopped this movement, and the system announced that the activation of a new skill begins, where the attack energy is first absorbed. When the system announced the second stage of skill activation, Sam's entire body was filled with chi energy, where he immediately prepared to deliver his first strike. And finally, it was announced that the third stage of skill activation had also been successfully launched, after which Sam rushed to the attack. Shocked by what was happening, Hank only had time to note the similarity of his opponent's level of training with his own, after which the left side of the young man's face finally met his opponent's fist. The movement that Sam performed contained enormous strength, accumulating everything that he had experienced up to that moment. Throwed far to the side, Hank fell to the ground, his condition no longer allowing him to continue the fight. Immediately, the defeated fighter was surrounded on all sides by spectators who had been watching the events all this time. None of them could believe that Sam had such enormous power, with which he defeated Hank himself. Katrin who also stood there and tried to wrap her head around everything that had just happened, was no less shocked than the others. Meanwhile, the winner of this confrontation approached the defeated enemy and offered to continue the fight. Where while he was saying this, the system announced that the owner had now mastered a new skill in striking back. However, at that moment, 
his henchmen arrived to their defeated boss, who began to lift him from the ground, not believing in his defeat even after he took the pill. The loser himself could not believe his defeat, trying to understand how this could even happen. Watching the team drag their weakened leader, the audience never ceased to be surprised that such a celebrity as Hank turned out to be weaker than Sam. And the winner of the fight noted that with the help of the new skill, earning points will become much easier. Quickly finding himself ahead of the losing side trying to leave the battlefield, Sam suggested not stopping there and continuing the fight, where he goaded those who dragged Hank, stating that their leader is now like a beaten dog, for whom they probably really want to avenge. Of course, these words greatly hurt the pride of the young people, who, however, did not know what to say in response. The winner himself noted that the circumstances were now in the best possible way, where most likely the guys would now attack him again and add points of damage to him. However, shouting that they would still have time to take revenge on him, the entire team suddenly turned around and ran away. Watching his opponents flee, Sam cursed, since this state of affairs did not promise him any new points. Then Catherine turned to him, who had already managed to approach Sam, where she reminded the young man that they needed signs from the losing side. Remembering that they were now in the exam in the first place, Sam rushed to catch up with the defeated, demanding to give him the tablets. And the young people, trying to hide from the reprisal, looked around and tried to urge each other on, seeing that Sam was catching up with them. Gradually, they began to come to the conclusion that they would not be able to hide, since the exhausted Hank was greatly slowing down their movement. And suddenly one of them, stopping abruptly, shouted that he had had enough of this running around, where he loudly shouted that even if he, Paul Handriggs, had to sacrifice his life, he would protect their leader, and therefore remain to detain Sam. Where the others, having heard this, were very surprised that when their comrade managed to become so selfless. But then the whole company, which continued to move, suddenly stopped. Where two more, calling themselves Frank Castle and John McCoy, also said that they were ready to die the death of the brave for their leader. The last person Hank could rely on also began to say that he was also ready to sacrifice himself. But others, the first to speak out about their victim, immediately stopped him, saying that then there would be no one to drag and protect Hank. Throwing the leader onto his back, the young man noted that now at least there was no need to rush. Meanwhile, Sam was rapidly approaching his recent opponents, where Catherine was not far behind him. And then suddenly three henchmen of the defeated Hank appeared in front of him, shouting loudly that now Sam was definitely finished. Noting the high devotion of the henchmen to their leader, the young man prepared for battle. But suddenly something happened that neither he himself nor anyone else, including Katrin, who was nearby, could have expected, where his opponents suddenly fell to their knees in front of them, raising their hands in a military salute, which was a sign of respect and submission. After which, begging Sam not to hit them, they took out their signs and handed them to the winner. Having accepted the offering, still not understanding what was happening, Sam asked in confusion that this was the way they wanted to stop him. The girl standing next to her noted that they most likely shouted loudly about Sam's death on purpose so that their leader would not think anything bad against them. But they themselves, afraid of the beating, surrendered. Which the surrendered trio immediately confirmed, saying that they deliberately called out their names loudly, since their future in friendship with Hank would definitely be secured, and they would somehow survive this defeat. Having received an explanation, the young man smiled understanding everything that this team had done with their boss, where there really was no loyalty. And then, clutching the treasure tablets, the young man noted that now he could move forward, because the exam continued. Two already quite exhausted students, being in the middle of the forest, were preparing to repel another attack. And then from somewhere out of the bushes a strong stream of energy burst out and rushed past them, after which the young people decided that it was better for them to leave this place. But before they had time to take even a few steps, two more students pounced on them from the bushes. Using forceful techniques, they quickly immobilized their opponents, where the latter did not expect such an outcome of the exam. And at the same moment, a stream of energy appeared again from the other side, rushing straight towards the prisoners. Where this time, being immobilized, the young people were unable to evade, and the attack was successful. After which the guys went limp, and the one who carried out this attack appeared from the thickets, noting that this was an excellent technique that Hank taught him. One of the prisoners demanded that they be released, 
to which the newly appeared member of the gang replied that in this case their master Hank O'Brien would not be able to get the most plaques and pass the exam better than anyone else, after which the one who had only immobilized his fellow student began to demand that he give the sign, to which the prisoner replied that then his days in the educational institution would be numbered. But in response, he only received a kick to the head and heard a statement regarding the fact that he does not know how to set priorities correctly. After which the young man who struck the blow explained that by giving away the sign, the guy would only lose his extraordinary future, while his master would lose first place. And so, demanding to give up the sign, the young people began to actively beat their captives. Experiencing dozens of blows, the young people could only think about how severe this humiliation was for them. From his complete powerlessness, one of the prisoners loudly began to call someone for help. Where? A second later, someone's voice practically ordered to stop and stop this beating, where, raising their heads, the victims saw Sam in front of them, accompanied by Catherine, and the young man continued, saying that random people he met could beat him up, but they didn't dare touch others. Hearing such an unusual and rather bold statement, the sign thieves literally froze in place. Recognizing the impudent man as Sam Stone, the young people noted that he was apparently very lucky that their leader did not kill him and the captives concluded that the hope of salvation was false, since a person like Sam could not do anything against their offenders. And the young man happily noted that he was very lucky, since, apparently, not everyone had learned that he had knocked out Hank. And now the trio was already rushing towards their new goal, declaring along the way that if he managed to escape from their master, then they would now finish what he started. Watching the approaching young people, Catherine asked her companion if he needed her help, to which the young man replied that the girl could just watch, after which he fearlessly took a step forward directly towards his next opponents. The first blows by the attackers were delivered simultaneously from three different sides. After some time, the young people noticed that their limbs were already hurting from the number of blows they had received, but their opponent was still quite alert, and their former captives declared with no less surprise that this Sam was not at all the same Sam who was familiar to them before. The very object of the application of physical force, to whom the system had only announced the addition of points all this time, suggested to his opponents not to stop trying, where the latter once again noted that they had already reached the limit of their capabilities, but the opponent's unchanged state made them very angry. However, after weighing all the pros and cons, the young people found only one reasonable solution, which was to leave the battlefield as soon as possible. However, Katrin immediately rushed after the guys trying to hide, shouting after them that they would not be able to escape. After a few steps, the girl performed a good jump, instantly blocking the path of two fleeing young men. They tried to break through further, but they were unable to do so, since their path was blocked by a powerful kick inflicted by Katrin, the power of which the young people were unable to withstand and literally fell to the ground like sacks of potatoes. But immediately jumping up, the two guys themselves detained their accomplice, saying that they alone did not want to receive money for their joint actions. Continuing his attempts to avoid punishment, the third began to beat his own people, demanding to let him go and give him the opportunity to escape. Where, busy trying to free himself from the grip, he didn't notice Sam appearing behind him, which struck with such force that the young man literally plowed his face into the ground, and at the same moment, his former captives settled with him for the beating. After some time, the entire rumpled trio sat by a tree with their hands tied behind their backs. And not far from them, Sam and Catherine and the two guys they saved were also sitting by the fire. The rescued only had time to thank their saviors for what they did, noting that it was unknown how it could all end for them. Sam replied that there was nothing to thank him for, mentally noting that thanks to these three hooligans he was able to earn a lot of points. Handing the sign to his faithful assistant, Sam thanked the girl saying that he couldn't have done it without her. Accepting this generous gift, which guaranteed passing the first stage of the exam, Katrin, like him earlier, replied that no gratitude was required, and the young man was already extending his hand with signs to the rescued, inviting them to take something that would definitely allow them to move on. However, the guys began to refuse this help, saying that they did not help in getting these trophies the total number of which could greatly help Sam in the end. But the winner did not want to hear anything, saying that he already had four signs. Having accepted the gift, the young people did not skimp on words of gratitude, also declaring that if Sam ever needed anything, he could count on them. 
and he really needed information regarding who was acting in Hank's interests and how, where he received information that some were extracting tablets for him. Other people on his team are focused solely on fighting monsters. All of this was confirmed by the guys saved by Sam, saying that the young man had already defeated the strongest of Hank's team. After listening to his interlocutors, Sam suddenly announced that this time he wants to make sure that both Hank and his entire team lose. In response, the guys shouted that this was impossible, since each of Hank's team was stronger than the average student. However, Sam stated that he was ready to take any blows from their opponents and deal with all the consequences. Here Katrin intervened in the dialogue, saying that he alone might not be able to cope with so many opponents, to which the young man explained that both Hank and his people were simply very arrogant, which is why he had to take the pill just to try not to fall in the eyes of others, where, even after the exam, if Hank tries to take revenge, it will only be on the one who humiliated him, that is, Sam. Then the young man turned to the guy's emotions, asking if they themselves were still tired of regularly acting as punching bags, where he said that at first they will allow themselves to be outdone in the exam, but then they will get used to these concessions and in all their future life activities they will be no better than slaves. Concluding his speech, Sam, rising to his feet, said loudly that if he were to change something in his life, there would definitely not be a better moment than now. There was deathly silence all around for a while, where Sam, thinking that his words had no effect, sank into his seat. But both recent prisoners shouted loudly that they really had enough of enduring all this and should start resisting. And Katrin, approaching her companion, noted that he had excellent speaking skills. In response, Sam, of course, thanked the girl, but noted to himself that he was just sharing his own life experience from a past life. And at this moment one of his new allies was already interested in where they should begin their actions, to which his savior replied that first he needed to photograph their new captives, after which the photo should be sent to all your friends, calling for the location of other members of Hank's team to be revealed. Sam also asked to mention that he was the initiator of everything and was ready to distribute all the signs he received, where he, Sam Stone, is ready to help absolutely everyone who needs help. Katrin noted that her companion acts very decisively, and in general does not behave like an ordinary student, and so the leader of everyone who had been under the yoke of Hank's team for a long time said loudly that the time had come to put their plan into action after which the entire company of young people got up and left the place of their short stay. A girl with bare shoulders was convulsively pressed against a tree, where, almost screaming, she asked to be left alone. But the two guys approaching her did not even think of stopping, demanding a sign and the female attention of a beauty whom they had not even noticed before for some reason. Having closed her eyes, the girl began to scream with all her might and call for help. And then Sam, who appeared behind the unscrupulous students, loudly told them to stop their actions. He managed to attract the attention of Hank's team members, who were quite surprised by such bold behavior of their once quiet classmate. Meanwhile, their planned victim had already risen to her feet, taking a couple of stones in her hands, where her face did not bode well for the attackers. Hank's henchmen didn't even have time to understand what had happened when they suddenly experienced a sharp pain in the back of their heads. Well, the defenseless girl, suddenly pulling her hair and unbuttoning her jacket, suddenly began to turn into a boy, where, looking at the defeated opponents, the young man, holding a wig in his hand, noted that two more had been disposed of. Meanwhile, Sam contacted his girlfriend, asking how they were doing with neutralizing Hank's henchmen, to which Katrin immediately replied that they had just dealt with another trio of lovers of easy prey, after which she added that they were now taking the signs and moving on to which Sam reminded her friend not to forget to deliver the prisoners to the designated place. Concluding the conversation, the young man noted that his new allies had exceeded all his expectations, having caught so many people from Hank's team, to which his partner, finishing tying up one of the neutralized hooligans, noted that he was very happy with the decision to stand up for himself. Of course, they would never win in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, so they attack in groups. And then Sam's partner asked him for what purpose he was collecting all the prisoners in one place, to which the young man replied that this was necessary in order to deal with everyone at once, where such determination impressed his partner quite strongly. And so, soon everyone who had been neutralized by the United Students was in one place next to those who had brought them here. Talking among themselves, the captives speculated about what their captors might want from them, 
where there were even suggestions that they were simply going to be subjected to group reprisals. But suddenly, seeing the opening portals, the prisoners realized that this was the very place where the monsters were supposed to appear to pass the second stage of the exam. And the latter did not keep themselves waiting at all, starting to emerge from the portals, which horrified all the captive members of Hank's team, who decided that in this way those who caught them decided to get rid of them once and for all. At that very moment, all these previously cool guys began to call their mother and beg to save them from such a terrible death. Sam, who had been watching what was happening all this time, finally voiced the command to join the battle, and everyone who had recently been hunting Hank's henchmen rushed to attack the monsters, where everyone, attacking monsters, used their abilities at the highest possible level. The director observing the exam saw the bound members of Hank O'Brien's team calling for help while among the monsters. Where, taking advantage of this situation, the mail department ordered to immediately move forward to rescue the students and suspend the exam. Of course, these monsters were artificial and could not cause physical injuries, but the psyche of the students could suffer, which the director voiced, hurrying the mentors moving inside the portal. And when the rescue mission was inside, the director sat down on the floor, thinking that he, too, would get a good deal for everything that happened. And so, after some time, all the students were gathered in the assembly hall, where the results of the exam were to be summed up. The director announced that the test was successful and now the best student will be publicly awarded, where the entire crowd immediately burst into applause, congratulating Sam and wishing him good luck. And so, the young man who appeared on stage thanked everyone for such an attitude and support, where he did not forget to note that it was thanks to all of them that he who specifically took fewer signs and killed fewer monsters, was able to take first place. Meanwhile, Hank's defeated team stood on the sidelines along with their leader, who was clearly not happy with this outcome. The director had already managed to present the best student with his well-deserved award, where the prizes were a potion that increases chi energy, a martial arts textbook, and a special card. This card, which is issued only to one, the best student, gives him a special status. This award created a real sensation among students, who noted that this time the prizes were much better than in previous years. She was especially happy for her friend and companion in the exam, Catherine, who still could not believe Sam's abilities, which brought him to first place. At this time, one of Hank's fighters turned to his leader, saying that this award was clearly intended for him, which only added fuel to the fire, where Hank, the loser in everything, was already beside himself with rage. And Sam, seeing that the award ceremony was over, deftly jumped off the stage. Approaching his old enemy, the young man, showing the prize, noted that he had heard a rumor that this award was intended for Hank, to which his opponent loudly asked what else Sam needed, who already got everything he could. And the students watching all this action noted that Sam probably wants to continue the fight, so he's running into it. And so it was, because the young man, having demonstrated the potion, asked his enemy if this was really something that would help increase his chi energy. After which, right in front of the enemy, enraged by the helplessness, Sam crushed the package, from which the pill immediately flew out, which the young man deftly caught and immediately swallowed. At that same moment, the young man felt as if his body was filled with all the energy of the world, where he immediately noted that his chi energy now moves in a completely different way, opening up new possibilities for its use. Katrin, who was watching what was happening, noted that when Hank took pills, he always chose those that caused the greatest harm to the body. Taking his old enemy by the head, Sam noted that the pill he had just taken was very similar to the one his opponent had used during the fight. Therefore, he will share it with Hank, who is so accustomed to these drugs, if he ever gets hold of something like this again. After which the young man turned around and walked away, laughingly declaring that even though they were opponents, they needed to help the helpless. Hank, who had long been at the limit of emotions, shouted that he and Sam were completely different people, of different status and position in society. The weekend came and all the students who arrived to study from the outskirts of the city, or even from other cities headed to their homes. Sam, sitting by the window of the bus, looking at the city landscapes passing before his eyes, noted that although this is a different world, in general, everything here is the same as it was in his old world.